안녕하십니까 온라인 서저리 김경원입니다. Greetings, so this is Dr. Kim Kyung Won of Online Surgery. Let's take a look at the surgical video and have a discussion. This is the patient of the day. The patient is 61 year old male patient, and in number 26, there was gingival swelling and pain, as well as mobility. After extraction of number 26, the patient wanted implant placement. You can see that there is a period on titus and there is a severe alveolar bone destruction. If you look at patient's history, about seven, eight years ago, implant was placed in number 27. It failed thereafter. Since then, the patient did not receive any further implant treatment. There's an implant on the other side. If you look at the patient's medical history, recently, the patient experienced a compression fracture of lumbar vertebra during exercise and the patient was prescribed with a bisphosphonate type of a medication because of osteoporosis. So as the patient went to a dental clinic, the patient came to have fear against bisphosphonate and did not take any drugs. My recommendation to the patient was since it was his first time taking bisphosphonate, he should go ahead and take them. Because there was compression fracture, I recommended the patient to take drugs. The treatment plan was to extract number 26, followed by socket preservation. AS collagen was planned to be used. When you use AS collagen, you don't need to use a membrane, but we decided to use Osmem Soft for coverage in number 26 and 27. Implants were planned using one guide. If you look at number 26, there is significant alveolar bone resorption. Fortunately, on the apex side, there is still residual buccal and palatal bone in number 27. The patient did not remember whether bone grafting was done on the implant placement site. If you take a look at the CT, after implant failure, it looks as if a bone grafting was performed. Considering the radio opacity, I think xenograft type of bone graft material was used as shown. In number 26, extraction was done, sufficient curatage was done, AOS collagen was placed, socket preservation was performed, and Osmem Soft was used before suturing. Post-op panoramic image was taken. If you look at number 26 in the distal area, something odd was observed. Looking at previous CT, there was root fragment, but it was not properly removed. CT was taken in number 26. Socket preservation was done nicely, but in the distal area, as shown, there was root fragment and there was a bit of bone defect. Curatage was planned once again. The suture in the front was not undone and the suture in the back was removed. Osmium soft was lifted and full curatage was done. Granulation tissue was removed, the AOS collagen was added, and a final suture was done. This is immediate post-op image after root fragment removal and curatage on the distal side. Socket preservation was done. As shown in number 26, it's like this. In the bone defect area, AOS collagen was placed. This is one month after post-op, and this is after four months. Four months after socket preservation, preparations were made for surgery. In number 26, you can see that the area where socket preservation was done is maintained, and in number 27, in the mesial side, there was root fragment, and now it's nicely maintained. One guide surgery was planned. You can see that the residual alveolar bone height was about 8.5. I thought it will not be a problem if fixation can be achieved in the inferior margin of the sinus. I did not think there will be full penetration 
uh, with 8.5 millimeter drilling. That was the way implant placement plan was formed. This is post op image on panoramic image. The sinus inferior floor seems to be penetrated, but bone graft it was not done. If you look at immediate post op CT in number 26, the apex area is uh, slightly in contact with the sinus inferior border, but it did not penetrate and there was no membrane perforation. It's the same with the number 27. It has slightly invaded the inferior border of the sinus and implant was placed and no special bone graft was done. The anticipation was for nice healing to occur in number 26 and 27. The root fragment was removed and implants were placed in number 26 and 27. This is post-op CT. You're going to see it in the surgical clip. When we performed a biopsy in the area where AOS collagen was placed, as shown around the graft material, new bone formation was occurring. ER type prosthesis was delivered, and this is the panoramic image. Three months after implant placement, prosthesis were delivered, and socket preservation was done about eight months prior to that. So, implants were placed five months after socket preservation. You can see at initial visit, and here two implants are placed. In number 26 and 27, prosthesis were delivered. You can see nice healing. In the inferior border of the sinus, no special bone graft was done. However, no major issues have risen. Let's take a look at the surgical clip. One guide template was adapted in patient's oral cavity and the fit was checked because this is a distal free end. Cross arch template was fabricated to cover the other arch. Tissue punch wide was used to remove overriding mucosa in number 27 first. Followed by number 26. After template removal, it was checked whether soft tissue was removed completely. And then template was adapted once again. In order to do biopsy on the EOS collagen graft, trafine drill was used to get the sample. In number 26, trafine drill was used to get the sample. You can see that the sample has come out. Flattening drill was used to flatten the top part in number 26 and number 27. Flattening drill was used. For initial drill, wide type was used. Full length drilling was done. Up until the stopper, Initial drilling was done as shown. 3.5 by 8.5 one guide drill was used to prep the site. 3.5 by 8.5. If you take a look, as I was using 3.5, there was not that much bone particles, so you could see that the bone quality was not ideal. Depth gauge was used, but there was no full penetration of the sinus floor. 4.5 by 8.5 one guide drill was used. Although the plan was to place 5.0, 4.5 final drill was used. 4.5 by 8.5 drilling was done in number 26 and 27. Depth gauge was used once again to check whether sinus floor was penetrated. It was not fully penetrated, perhaps it was partial penetration. KSBA 5.0 by 8.5 implant was placed at 80% using engine. Implant driver and torque wrench was used to get the final position. Depth control was done. Primary stability was good. It was about over 30 Newton centimeters. Yellow marking was checked and in number 27 is the same, but 
the mesial implant driver is maintained to serve as a vertical anchor. And number 27, KSBA 5.0 by 8.5 implant was placed 70-80% using engine. Hand wrench was used to get final depth control. Because bone graft was done in the past, the primary stability was better. It was positioned nicely. Smart peg was used to measure ISQ values. In number 26, you can see that the IS values were about 74 and 71, quite favorable. And in number 27, it's even more favorable, 80 and 71. Depth gauge was used to assess a soft tissue thickness and healing abutments were connected. That was how surgery was completed. Attention was paid so that small instruments did not fall into oral cavity and healing abutments were connected in number 26 and 27. That was how surgery was completed. Today, we have looked at a case where after extraction, there was a defect and AOS collagen was used for socket preservation. Thereafter, one guide was used to place implants. The biopsy results showed that from AOS collagen, new bone formation was nicely done. As of late, a lot of positive reviews are being made about AOS collagen. If you use it for socket preservation, you'd be able to gain favorable results. Today's case was about using one guide rather than one cast involving the sinus floor a little bit for implant placement. Thank you for watching.